exciting video announcement. Today, I have a special treat for you all. A fantastic individual named Whoop suggested an incredible idea, learning how to locate the addresses of items found on the ground. Tutorial. You want a tutorial on how to get your head like mine? And that's precisely what we're diving into today. But wait, there is more. I want to hear your suggestions too. Don't hesitate to share your thoughts in the comments or join the boys over in our Discord channel. Now, let's tackle the question at hand. How can we find the address of an object lying on the ground? It's actually quite straightforward. Just like in our teleportation video, we'll be focusing on the vertical axis of the object by moving it up and down while carefully observing for changes. We'll pinpoint the address we're after. Once we have that, we can easily examine what axis is the address and voila, we have our object's address. But before we jump into it, as always, make sure to read the terms of agreement for your game and don't break the rules. Enjoy. Okay, so we're at the desktop. Our mission is to find the address of this object. So let's take this object. It's a canister of some sort, a gas canister, and it has a location, it has a position. We can pick it up, we can throw it, it will rotate and so on, but it still has a position in the 3D space of the game. And what we can do is we can search for for example, the vertical axis. Uh, we can search for an unknown value and change the vertical position of that object and then search for the changes. So we, we can know if it increases in value or if it decreases in value. So if we throw it into the air, the axis will increase in value because it's higher and that way we can filter the other addresses out so uh, without me explaining explaining further let's uh, search for a value so let's go into sheet engine here i have attached it to that island game make sure you don't have vac on and so on otherwise you will get banned and in the search settings, search for the data type. Uh, if you're not sure for the vertical axis, it can be either float or double for 3D games. So my, my game is 32 bits, so it will most likely be a float. And we don't know the value, so we'll search for unknown initial value. Uh, if you have a 64-bit game, it might be a double. So a double is just a float with more decibel or decimals uh, to use. So you can, if if float doesn't work, just try doubles. And uh, we have searched one time. We have quite a lot of results, and we need to filter them out. So, like I said earlier. We need to change the position, either increase it or decrease it. Now it's increased from it lo its lost position on the vertical axis, and we will search for increased value. So go back to Sheet Onion when you have set the object to a higher point, increase value. Take the object again, and now decrease the value. So it was there. When we search, now it's on the ground, so we can search for decreased value. Now we have only 500 results left. Let's uh, do it again. So these faulty addresses that doesn't follow the object's nature are filtered out. We increased the value. We search for increased. And what you can do now is increase it again on top of the increase so i'll just throw it into the air now it's 
higher up than the point before that means we can search for increased once again so increased wait for it to drop round and search for decreased value so i have hotkeys you can use hotkeys like this under hotkeys in settings and you can search for increased value decreased value i have set to these buttons i suggest you do the same or choose your own buttons but still use hotkeys it makes your world easier so we searched for increased or decreased value my bad let's increase it again so we just Forty-one results left. I think that will be, or that will be it. Let's uh, check these values. So it's probably not these ones with the uh, uh, E minus thirty-seven stuff. It's probably one of these addresses or these values that look more logical. Uh, so let's add some va some addresses. We have this address. Skip the green addresses for the object and instances. Uh, it will probably not be them most of the time. If you choose these green addresses, uh, it might be some camera stuff and so on. And we're not looking for that. We're looking for an object, an instance. So let's take these addresses. Uh, these ones now actually let's te test the 4000 values first because these minus 60,000 they don't look good uh, so let's test the 4000 addresses first and when we have tested the 4000, if they don't work, we'll go on to the minus 60,000. So uh, it's 4000 something. Let's uh, change it to 4300. So it didn't go up in there. But if we throw our weapon, you can see that something moved up. So let's. It's teleported. So some things or something is right here let's uh, check the next values and now you can see the hand marker went up so uh, let me just make this larger all of these addresses are close by in memory Look at there, 2C, 5C, and so on. So it's probably some attributes in this object. And, uh, or maybe this. So let's find the address that actually teleports the object and not just the hand and not just the uh, model and so on. So let's change the first now let's change the first three addresses and it's up in there let's uh, change it to 4.5 instead so it's up in there uh, but the thing is if we change it to 4.5000 the marker is still there so i think uh, the position is still here, but that's just the model 
and as you can see you can select it from here or not yeah so i think it choosing one of these addresses that hold the actual position would be smarter so let's uh, check the next two so it's 4.5 and nothing happened let's uh, check the next three nothing happened that was the hand and it teleported now so let's check the first one if we go here it teleports when we go near it so it's the throwing mechanism if we change it to uh, 4,600 not that large but and we aim we can see that it's up in there and when once we go near it it teleports back so if we wanted to change the destination of this object we can just change this axis and with this address We can now find the other coordinates. So uh, go into browse this memory region, select display type, then float. Since the vertical axis was a float, we will look close by. So there's some values here that look interesting. We have our vertical axis. If we change uh, what comes the closest by, so it's this 72,000 and it's 60,000 value. Let's uh, change this 72,000. Let's change it by uh, 200 units. So it's further back now. Let's change it even more that's uh, 400 units so it's at a different place now what happened to it it's somewhere here now but we have found uh, the X position so the X position let's take it back and with the X position being 72,000 uh, means that the next position should be the Z position right so we have 72,000 4,000 and then 60,000 if we change that position where did it go now I don't have a clue maybe I changed it too much 300 units might be oh, I can't see it now wait okay there it is let's change the position now okay so there we can see the difference Let's uh, change it to 61,000 and it move, moved further back and there it is we can pick it up at the other position and that's the object so if you want to know the, uh, the address of the object just use find out what accesses this address and it should be something like 1c or the offset is 1c and the address of the object should be eax so uh, i hope you enjoy this video
if you guys have more suggestions just uh, leave them in the comments